Those are the busy grunts of the Atlantic puffin, a small species of penguin-like bird with a bright charismatic orange and black striped beak. It's fair to say these cliff-dwelling animals are conditioned to a raucous environment. Their habitat is a virtual Swiss cheese of coastal cliff burrows that's blasted 24-7 with the boom and crash of waves and wind. But scientists are still concerned that even here, amid the noise of Europe's rocky cliffs, humans may still be too disruptive for these feathery neighbors. Human uh, voices, uh, maybe hikers passing by or, um, or tourists kind of passing by a nest can actually have uh, disturbances on those animals. That's Dr. Aaron Mooney, a biologist here at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. He studies how marine animals hear and respond to sound in the world around them. And since 2017, he's been here in the northern part of Iceland, catching puffins and analyzing their hearing to learn more about how they perceive and react to the soundscape. They're not just influenced by loud sounds, such as like a big jet going overhead, but they're also influenced by relatively quiet sound. So that, that disturbs them enough to um, leave the nest oftentimes. And actually what that has indirect effects, it's not that the egg gets cool or anything, but it's actually makes the eggs more susceptible to predation, predation to, by rats or gulls or that kind of thing. And so um, you have these, we have these secondary effects that just the low levels of noise can, can have on animals. Mooney refers to these small auditory increases as our sound footprints. These aren't too different from our carbon footprint, but instead of generating harmful emissions, we're creating an increasingly noticeable hum of noise that can disrupt the Earth's natural chorus. We often think of the really loud sounds, such as underwater explosions or um, oil, drilling for oil, or Navy sonars, right, are really these impacts. But the more we're learning that the small increase in the background noise or these small disturbances can really influence the animals. And while chatting with a friend by the beach or the coastline might seem pretty innocuous, Mooney says it's the additional stressors of climate change that have made those sounds that much more of a burden on puffins, who traditionally communicate in the low-pitched grunts you heard earlier. You know, just in the times that we've been in Iceland, the past 10 years or so, we've seen them move from dense colonies in the south, in the Westman Islands, to now being mostly um, in, the, in the north of Iceland. So they're moving more northward, there's food, which is often sand lance, these small fishes, they're moving more northward as well. And so their, their habitat is really changing for a variety of reasons. To puffins, our disembodied human noise is anxiety-inducing. The same anxiety they might feel when avoiding a predator. Um, if, if you're an animal, for example, that lives in an area that has a lot of human activity and the activity is simply, simply noise-based, like you can't see the people but you can hear them, um, those noises can in, induce stress or cha cause changes in behavior that, that impact essentially the animal's reproduction or communication capabilities. Uh, so we know that even at really low levels can impact uh, impact animals. On island archipelagos, like the Farne Islands northeast of England, some reports suggest that local puffin populations have seen as much as a 30% decline in their size as a result of climate pressures. So after years of studying sound in animals, Mooney says it's clear that our impact on noise may be having the furthest reaching consequences across the animal kingdom. What's amazing is that we've never really found a deaf animal or a deaf species, right? You know, we have sort of have blind cave fish and, um, you know, moles that don't see very well and that, that kind of thing. We have animals that have different sensory deprivations, but hearing is really sort of consistent across animal taxa. And so these puffins are diving down to, you know, you know 100, 150, maybe 200 meters at some point. And um, so there's a lot of pressure down there. And, um, and so one thought was that maybe they wouldn't hear very well on land because they're so well adapted to underwater. We found that was not true. They have good sense of hearing as good as um, almost any other bird species. Puffins have become, in a way, like the canary in the coal mine, but for the endangerment of wild soundscapes, unimpeded by bustling humans. Even just in the areas that we've been studying, um, puffins, right, like we've kind of worked in sort of somewhat secret habitats, you know, meaning that there aren't a lot of tourists visiting these particular areas, um, but you do see folks kind of finding them on maps or, or showing up in areas that you're, um, you know, you thought were fairly pristine and it, and it, it's getting harder and harder to find sort of those wild areas. We want to understand the impacts of the animals, but that it's already been shifted a little bit, right? These animals are already seeing sort of uh, human encroachment. So yeah, yeah, it's tricky.
Music for this podcast was by Pottington Bear, provided via the Free Music Archive. You can follow Dr. Mooney and the Mooney Lab team by going to go.hui.edu slash Mooney. That's M-O-O-N-E-Y. For Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, I'm Daniel Hentz.